Let's pop the hood on this old car, stick a wrench on the crank, and see if it's stuck. If it is, well, let's pull some spark plugs out, put the whole camera down in there, see what we're working with. As soon as I figure out what size that uh, crank bolt is, and we'll put the breaker bar on it. And see, let's see. Oh, that's a big old bolt. I ain't got a big enough socket. I'll be right back. They call me Chad Socket Fingers. Yes, I need help. I know it. All right, we have the size. And I don't know if I can get the breaker bar on it. No, that ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. I can already tell you, I'm gonna have to get me a little red wagon and put my tools in it and bring them all out here because <laughs> that's gonna be a lot of walking back and forth. Well, I can't get it on. All right, we're on. Oh, we're off. Dang it. If y'all remember from the previous video, I believe I told y'all that he said he parked it because it was running hot. He thought it might be a blown head gasket. Well, if it is, then he parked it, watered the cylinders rust, and it's probably really, really, really locked up. I am planning on having to pull the motor and tear it apart, but I thought I'd just try this just to see you never know well i can't get anything on let me go get a ratchet i'll be right back all right i got a ratchet and a big old pipe let's just see if we can get on it now She's really stuck. All I'm doing is turning that bolt. And I'm probably going to break it off. So I think I will stop for now. Let's pull the plugs and stick the camera down in there. Let me show you something too. I don't know how well you can see it. I'm going to zoom in right now. See, this is the exhaust manifold. See that one. That one. That one that one they're all cracked i don't know why i mean let's go on the other side and i'm gonna pull the plugs and let's just see what we see well let's see if we can get these plugs man them them plug wires that's like steel line steel fuel line they're so stiff what in the dead and they're just pulled apart <laughs> I gotta get a screwdriver just to get the dead blame wires off. All right. Come off of there, Mr. Boot. Mr. Spark Plug Boot. There you are. What size are you, little buddy? You're that size there. Oh my goodness gracious. I don't think they're gonna come loose. Get over here. Oh, holy. Woohoo. Yep. It's been a while since they've been out. Well, it was running about right. Wasn't rich. Plug's a little rusted. Well, let's see what the next one tells us. Oh, that ain't coming loose. What in the devil? Well, hmm, that spark plug, she's in the hole, let me tell you. All right, let me get back over here. Uh, oh. uh, well, 
I'm gonna have to go get a bigger ratchet, I do believe. I decided we'd go ahead and put the big boy on it because she's pretty doggone tight. Well, porcelain broke off of it. Back to my way. Alright. Oh yeah, she come loose then. Then there's a little black, possibly some Earl. Drinking a little bit of Earl. All right. Goodness gracious. That is just ridiculous. Oh, God. All right, let me get both of them out. We'll stick a camera down in here. See what we see. You know what I didn't even do? If I can find it, I will check the Earl. I don't see a dipstick. Hmm. Oh, here it is. I found it. I found it. What do we have? Uh, well, there's no water and it's a little over full. So that very well could be from Wata, um, but it's, I mean, the oil still looks pretty good. That's odd. All right, let us get this camera in the hole. See what we see. You gotta turn the light on first though. All right, here is the front cylinder. I don't, I don't know the cylinder numbers on the board. All right, let's look in this cylinder first. And see all that dust? That's your piston right there. You see, well, let's see. You can't see it all well. There's a little bit of white right there. You know how aluminum does, but it gets corroded. All right, let's go to the next hole. Yep, that piston there is really white. And of course, there's the cylinder wall very very rusty but i want to show you this back one here uh where you see the cylinder wall there i think that right there is a valve at the top of the picture and you see it's very very rusty and this motor will never run in its current configuration well fellas you know what this means don't you <laughs> i got to pull this motor out there to park and we're going to have to rebuild it. So, let's get started. I believe we'll get the hood off first thing. And what you want to do is get you a propping rod and prop her up. So when you take them bolts loose, they don't just fall everywhere. I don't think this gun is going to get in there. So with this, uh, that impact won't hardly get in there to it. Ooh. Ooh. All right, I guess we're dropping wrenches early today. Well, this bolt won't come loose. I reckon I'll have to take the whole hinge off with it. All right, Mr. Hood. Well, now that we got the hood off, let's get this air breather off. Ow! I soaked a bunch of these bolts in the PB blaster a day or two ago. Hopefully it's gonna help. Well, this is weird right here. You know, I'm used to air cleaner 
open it up here. No, this in here, take the top off. Huh. And there's the air filter. And lots of mice has been building their houses in there. Well, hey, Mr. Spider, let's, let's go on now. Get. Well, you're coming back. I'm going to kill you. Get. I'd like to scoot y'all back just a little bit because you're in my way. Ugh. Not one of those boots, come on. <laughs> well, I had to go get my tent because I was in the direct sunlight and it was getting a little warm on me. Uh, anyway, let's get this motor pulled out. I think I'm going to go ahead and pull the radiator out. So I got to get transmission lines loose. I got to get a couple of hoses loose. So let me do that. Uh, well, Dad Blaine, why don't you come over there? Let me get the screwdriver. Come over there! Son of a gun, you. My Dad Blaine power steering pump is right in the darn way. Can't get your hand on nothing. Oh, that's got a little bit of antifreeze in it. Oh, let me get them transmission lines loose now. Ooh. I'll tell you what, it's a pretty good idea to soak this stuff a day or two ahead of time because so far all of it's coming loose pretty doggone easy. Got these here voltages out of this fan shroud. There's quite a bit of antifreeze left in it, so I'll have to. I'll have to put some water down here on the ground just in case Miss Daisy comes by. I don't want her drinking no antifreeze. Alright, let me get this other bolt out. There's half of it. Oh, this right here. I got you. I got you, buddy. Got one bolt out. All right, I got bolt number two out. Mr. Franchrell, you get out of the way. I'm gonna get this radiator out. All right. Here we come. Mr. Radiator. To keep from tearing this fan up when I pull this motor out, I think I'll go ahead and take it off. How long is this bolt? Good gracious alive. Well, now that I've spent all day getting those four bolts out, I guess I'll go on home <laughs> and we'll start again tomorrow. That's ridiculous. Try not to get too rough because I don't want to jam it in that condenser coil. Finally, good gracious alive. All right, now that I got that done, what if we pulled off their air conditioner lines from the compressor. You need to get out of the way, buddy. I think what we'll do next, we'll take the power steering pump off and leave it off. How about that? Our steering pump is off. If you got a memory like a tree stump, like I do, put your bolts back in the hole where they come out if you can. That way you don't have to remember later on where they come out of. Now I can get to the fuel pump. It appears that it's got one of those crimp type hose clamps. Why you would ever want to put that on something, especially this type of location, I don't know. All right, got that off. What is next? What is next? Just to be on the safe side, cause I can get rough pulling the motor out. I'm gonna pull this condenser out too, because I do not want to smash it. All right, will this come out easily? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on, Mr. Hose, you gotta come in. Far she is. 
we'll put these bolts back in so we don't forget where they go. Well, I guess next we'll try to get these exhaust bolts broken. I mean, broke loose. Are you gonna come loose or you gonna break? I believe it broke loose. Oh, look here. Oh, come on, fella. Come on now. Oh, yeah. All right, number two. Are you gonna break loose or are you gonna break? Ooh, he might break. You no, here we go. Oh look here. Oh yes, yeah, two for two. Is bolt number three gonna behave? Let us see. Yep, she just a broke. Oh well. Well, what's number four gonna do? What are you going to do, number four? Yep, there she went. Well, two for four ain't bad, I guess. Well, I just realized, you know, after I broke half these bolts off in the manifolds that I can't hardly get to the bottom ones. So, I think what we're going to do is jack it up. But well, we're going to take the exhaust loose from that flange right there. And then, uh, whilst I got it jacked up, I'll get the transmission loose and the transmission linkage. And we'll be pretty close to being ready to pull this thing out. This jack weighs about 14,000 pounds. It's really heavy. Get on the ladder. Thank you. I really enjoy letting rust all in my eyeballs. Thanks a lot. Well, look here. <laughs> this exhaust over here is so rusted. Well, it just fell apart. So, I gotta get out my under here, dead gum. Anyway, the exhaust is now loose. I don't have to fool with that side over there. So that's wonderful. Now I need to get the uh, transmission loose. I had a dream the other night. I don't laugh. I had a dream that I was working on this car. And, well, I've lost my extension. I'll tell you about it as soon as I find my extension. I guess I left it over there. Well, if that don't beat all that I've ever seen in my life. I don't know where my extension went. Well, somebody here it is right here. I see it. I see it. I'm not blind. I see it. All right. Back to my dream. And don't laugh. Uh, I dreamed that I was working on this car. You know, this big old trim on the side. I dreamed that it started breaking off and falling off. And I was just almost in tears. <laughs> because it was breaking off. Why well, didn't I have that dream? I don't know. Well, for future reference, you ain't got a clue what size these bolts are. So nothing seems to fit. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or what, but I'm getting to where I'm not a fan of being under a car when it's on jack stands. I just don't trust them anymore. And I don't really know why, because I'll never have one break. I just, I just ain't comfortable with it. I hope when I get my shop built that I can eventually have a lift and I won't have to worry about this no more. Oh, and by the way, these bolts are three quarter. Can I reach the motor mounts from here? Is my next question. Oh, wait a minute, I feel it. Okay. Yeah, we'll get that from underneath here. Bye, George. I think we've got it. Let me get the other side off and then I reckon it'll be ready to come out. Well, unless I have overlooked something, I do believe this engine is ready to come out. Wait a minute, I'm looking at it now. Transmission linkage, I forgot it. Other than the transmission linkage, I do believe this engine is ready to come out. But if you've seen, I believe it was the first lockjaw video, you remember that I broke my boom pole, so I need to repair it first. So, let's get busy doing that. Here is the old boom pole. That's where it broke right there. I mean, you know, look how rusty and all that it is. So no wonder it broke. I mean, look at this right here. Good gracious. Well, my plan is I got this flat stock right here. I don't know, what is that, inch and a quarter? Something like that. And I'm going to cut this rod off right, right there because all that's welded. And we'll cut that off, and then I'm gonna cut it off right here, right before that weld. 
and then we're gonna put that flat stock in its place. I'm probably gonna cut this top piece off. I'll give you one million guesses what that is right there. Nope, you're wrong. That is two wrist pins from a 350 Chevrolet. So anyway, I'm probably gonna cut them off and we'll leave this. Actually, it might cut, well, I don't know. We'll probably leave that on there and just run that uh, flat stock on top of it welded here. And, and of course I welded here and then back here, I'll flatten it out a few inches and then we'll go up to this piece here. Hopefully that'll be strong enough where I won't break it anymore. Do a little plasma cutting, do a little plasma cutting, yes siree. Let us see if we can get this plasma cut it off. Got to whoop on it with a big hammer. With our tis, it might work and it might not. I don't know. I'm not an engineer. You might be wondering, why did you use flat bar? Well, that's all I had. Didn't have any round, so use what you got. You know, that's my motto. Anyway, maybe it'll work. I need to get out there, uh, get my lifting device mounted to the car, and then let's just see if this thing will work or not. Well, I think it's ready to come out. I had to fight with that darn transmission leakage for a little while. Uh, I got my little apparatus here hooked up, so let me go get the tractor and we'll see if we can get this motor out of here. Well, that certainly did not go as I planned. <laughs> uh, that's that's one hoss of a motor, I'm telling you, it's heavy. And my tractor just wouldn't lift it up. And I don't know if you can see it or not, well, let me zoom in. It rainbowed, <laughs> it rainbowed that boom. Uh, I figured, you know, it would bend it some till the slack got out of that uh, strap. At least it didn't break, but anyway, I got the uh, engine hoist out here now and I had to get me a tire put on there so the engine hoist would just go under it. I think what I'm gonna do is we'll hook this up to the motor. I'll hook the tractor up to the car and we'll just ease it out a little at a time. The only thing I know to do. Oh, 
we just about got her out. Firewall's a little bit rotten too. That's all I got. The only thing I know to do is hook to it with a tractor, pull it back a little bit, and then start leveling the motor. This is going to take a minute. I'll be back. Well, that only took me about two days <laughs> to get that crank to the other side. I'm gonna do some work on that thing if I have to use it very much. Anyway, I'm gonna try to pull it back a little more. I think that's about as straight as it's gonna get. So, I'm gonna pull the car back and then I'll just have to lift this up and bring it around. Stay right there. <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, I'll <laughs> well, alrighty then. <laughs> that was not expected. That didn't go as planned at all. Uh, no, I, I knew I had that transmission clear of that car. So, you know, I was like, what in the world happened? Well, I'm walking up here, left the start tire wire on, it drug it, it drug everything. That's pretty pretty stout wire right there. Didn't I do that with something else? Oh yeah, on lock jaw pulling the rear end down. Anyway, let me see if I can straighten this mess out. Well, I got it straightened up, got the uh, engine hoist standing back upright, got the motor flopped over like it's supposed to be. It masked the grill up. Just a little bit here and here. Eh, ain't nothing I can do about it. The reason that happened, well, one, cause I'm dumb. Two, the tractor way back yonder and I couldn't see the motor until just right at the last minute I saw the whole thing go over. Wasn't nothing I could do then, so. Anyway, let me get it hooked up to the tractor and we'll get it over in the basement and get it on the engine stand. I'll tell you what, this has been one heck of an evening. <laughs> you know it all, y'all gonna have a heyday with this. I don't care, I'm tired, I'm going home. We'll worry about this motor tomorrow. Well, it's the next day. <laughs> Hopefully, today will be a very uneventful day, but it ain't starting out very good because I got a big old puddle of what I'm assuming is transmission fluid. That transmission has probably got a uh, rusted hole in the pan. Anyway, let's get these separated and get that on the uh, engine stand and get to tearing it apart. Looks like the start tar's got to come on. I forgot a bolt. Here's the goofy looking starter. Forgotten to take off a very important part. That would be the dust cover on the bottom. Now let's see if she'll come off. Oh, now it's low, now it's low. Oh, yeah. Get off! Oh, yeah. Well, 
that's just great. Well, I had to lay the motor on its side, you know, because this motor doesn't rotate. That's the only way I can get to three of the converter bolts. That top one, and it won't break loose, so I may end up having to sawzall it off. I don't really want to do that, because, you know, I was board planning on cleaning this out and you're using it, but I may not be able to do it now. I've got to cut that off. Roll over, you fatties! Here is the issue with this here. You know, the motor won't turn. Uh, I could get to these three bolts pretty easily. This in here, uh, well, I just couldn't get a wrench on it. And I tried to open it a wrench. Of course, I messed the uh, nut up. But I took a pry bar, like this right here, and I pried that box into that wrench on that nut. So let's us see if we can get it broke loose now and get that darn converter off of there. Well, now that I got all that off, let's get it on the engine stand. Well, I got it on the engine stand, but as you can see, she's really, really leaning. It's it's bending stuff back here, and it's too wide. I couldn't get all four arms to bolt, and I still got tension on this chain here. Uh, it's just too heavy for this old cheap Chinese junk engine stand. So, only thing I know to do is I'll jack it back up, get some of the weight off that. We'll leave it hanging here and I'll just start taking everything off front and take the manifolds off and try to get some weight off of it. I think we'll start by vacuuming all this garbage off of it so I can actually find the bolts. <laughs> I do believe we'll start by taking all these accessories off and what are we going to start with? I don't know.
I get the Earl filter off now. Earl filter. I may or may not have bent this Earl filter yesterday when it fell over. I guess we probably ought to drain the oil in. Let me go ahead and do that. Definitely have a hole in the oil pan. Well, I reckon I'll be looking for a new one on him. Well, no water came out, so that's good. Curls are drained. Now let's jack it up a little bit more. So I can get to them bottom exhaust bolts. So I can break all them off, too. So I got one out. That one there is just rounding me off. That one's doing the same thing. Broke that one off. Well, I don't know how I'm going to get them on. It's just rounding off. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get me a big old chisel. And I'm just going to whoop the devil out of them. Oh, yeah. What is off going to fold off? Will these come off with the impactuals? Let us see. A 14 millimeter fits a little tighter, so let me try it and see what happens. Well, that one's already loose. Awesome. How about this one? Oh, look at there. That loose. What about this one? Ooh, that hair broke loose. Awesome, man. What about you, buddy? You gonna be four for four? I'm on now. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. That manifold broke too right here. So, you know what I'm going to do with it? I'm here. That right there. Well, I got a lot of weight off of it now. So, I wonder if this engine stand can handle it. Let us see. It's a lot better. Yeah, I believe we can handle it now. All right, well, it's very nice to have it on the engine stand now. So, I think I'll go ahead and pull the cover off there off next. Oh, that whole stud thing, look. Dog, dog. Shall we get the valve covers off? Not bad. Not bad at all. Are you Ford fanatics, answer me a question. The valve covers say Thunderbird. Did this come out of Thunderbird? Or is that just something that Ford put on valve covers? I don't know. Somebody tell me. I reckon we'll get the manifold off now. Those are really, really rusty. Socket ain't gonna get them. Let's try the old millimeter socket trick again. That there fits pretty good. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Where's the hog? Need the hog. Oh yeah, that might work. No, sir. No, sir. -ry. Got that one out though. That's good. Let me get some vice grips. 
the universal socket. Oh yeah, it broke loose. Let's get the chanty locks now. I got to find somewhere to pry. I don't really see. Is that right here? Maybe? Oh yeah. You got it. Looks like there's still something holding this. Oh, I see. Where this motor is made, I gotta take these off and take the push rods off because the push rods go through the intake. This ain't like a small box Chevrolet. Interesting. Let me pull that rockers, uh, the rocker shafts off. I don't know that it matters, but those rocker arms have no adjustment to set the lash. So I'm gonna keep these push rods where they were in the motor. Like I said, I don't know. So I'll do a little studying on it, and we'll see about that. If some of y'all know, feel free to call me. And don't laugh at my box either. That's all I can find. It's the only box in this entire basement. So it's going to have to do. And I do have a mark front and rear, so. Oh yeah, there she is. Oh yeah, it weighs about 95 pounds. Holy crap, holy. Golly. Oh, man. That's rough on the old back. Now we have some kind of a pan. How does this come off? Well, I don't know. Just like that. Hmm. Well, I guess the heads are next. Let me get them off. Last time I took a head off the motor, it fell on the foot, so I'm going to be a little more careful this time. Goodness, that's a lot of rust. A whole lot of rust. Well, here it is. This is what I've been wanting to look at, these similar walls. Because on camera, they looked really rough. But feeling of them now, they don't feel that rough. Uh, I, I think this motor will probably be okay. Over here, about the same thing. There may be just a tad bit of pitting right there, but I don't think so. Uh, also, it has very, very little ring ridge. So that's great. If I can get these pistons out without busting them, well, even if I do have to bust them, I'll buy new pistons. But I'm gonna at least try to hone these cylinders out, and if they turn out good, hey, great, we'll put the thing back together. Let's, uh, let's look at the heads, and they look pretty good too. This is the exhaust valve that you saw on camera. It looked really bad. Well, it don't in person. I do believe it's stuck a little bit because I can see a gap, which, you know, I expect that. Had a lot of carbon build up, a lot of rust, which that'll clean up. I was looking at the seats, especially the exhaust, and they don't look like they've been hammered down into the head. So I really believe these heads will probably be okay too. You know, they'll have to be worked on a little bit. Uh, cleaned up, sure, I'll, I'll send them off, get them magnafluxed, and uh, then I'll probably do a, at least a valve lapping on each one of them. I always have to see, you know, what the valve seats look like also looking at the head gaskets I see no sign of a blown head gasket anywhere on either one on either side um, so he said it was overheating it I don't believe it's a blown head gasket that well there's no water and oil no well I just don't think it was a head gasket anyway uh, I'm gonna get this thing flipped on his head I don't know if that timing chain cover comes off now or after you get the oil pan, I'll have to look at it and see. I may take it off now and then flip it on his head and we'll get the crank out and go to beating on the pistons. Upon further investigation, it appears this front cover will come off. Now, put the forward head and get it off. Hey, that just come right off. <laughs> that scared me just a little bit. <laughs> This is quite interesting. Huh. This is your fuel pump eccentric. And it's got a slot here, a bolt. And huh. 
that's that's weird. Let me see if I can get the lifters out and we'll go ahead and pull the cam out. Well, the lifters, I can only get two out, I think. The rest of them are sort of stuck. I, I could pull them up some, so hopefully they're pulled up enough. I can pull this cam out, knock them down, and then pull them out that way. Hopefully. Look at there. That ain't like the Chevrolet. Chevrolet had to press them on. Interesting. Also, and oh, by the way, that's aluminum gear. Had Teflon on it, Teflon's gone, those teeth are wore, and the chain had a lot of slop in it. I don't know why in the world they thought that was a good idea. I got to have a bolt. I need a bolt to stick in the hole. Does this bolt fit? I'll be. This bolt fits. Is that a cam retainer? It may be. And it is Alon wrenches. Ooh. Let's get this to come out. Come out of there. Is there something else holding it? I don't know forward. Hmm. I don't understand why it won't come out. Slide hammer time. Oh, here it comes now. Oh, yeah. Easy. Easy. What's tight on that front bearing? Is. I'm telling you, that looks like a brand new cam, or what I can see right now. <laughs> what in the world? Well, there's a little wear right there. I may get a new cam, I don't know. We'll just see. Alright, let me see if I can flip this fat boy over. I'm really concerned that it's going to try to fall off this. I don't understand that. Tell you what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to flip it back over and we're gonna have to soak it. Uh, because I got in the habit of wearing turning right I won't ever get the rods off. So let me turn it back over. Firstly, I completely forgot about the lifters. Y'all think I'm joking, but when I tell you I ain't got a memory, I don't have memory. Ten seconds after I get something in my head, it goes right back out and I don't remember it. Anyway, I got it set up on one side. Uh, this is PB Blaster, that's all I got. So we're gonna let that soak overnight. And you know, if this is gone, disappeared, well, that tells me that it's making it by the rings. If it's still there, well, then the rings are all crudded up. So tomorrow, we'll see what this does. And if I have to, I'll get the old flamethrower out and we'll heat them up and uh, see if we can't break them loose and then we'll flop it over and do it to the other side. Well, actually, matter of fact, look here. There's PB Blaster dripping out of it right now. See that? We can probably see it more there. See it dripping? So well, that's a good sign. Maybe, uh, maybe that PB and Blaster will break them loose. I was cleaning up down here before I went home. Well, I'm checking the block again. PB Blaster's gone. PB Blaster's gone. PB Blaster's gone. PB Blaster is not gone. So it tells me that cylinder it's going to give us trouble and then uh i'll tell you what i'll go ahead and flip it over now since i know that one is going to give us trouble i'll flip it over and we'll uh fill the other side up and then we'll see what happens in the morning it is the next day and as you can see that one and that one they drained that one and that one did not so that means those two there the rings are pretty crudded up uh i ran out of pb blaster so i put some transmission fluid in it last night uh, anyway, you know, these two here, they're still holding, so that means they're really good and stuck. Uh, it's been almost 24 hours. Uh, I'm impatient. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to roll this outside. I'm going to get the torch. We're going to light it up and see if we can't break those two loose and then that one down there also. I'm 
gonna hit every one of them just a little bit. I put this collar back on the end of the crankshaft and I'm gonna put my uh, pipe wrench on there. And we're gonna give her a little tug, and see what happens. I'm afraid to do much because I'm afraid this thing's gonna fall off of this engine stand. I ain't kidding you, it ain't it just barely on. That's hot. Eh. Oh yeah, that ain't happening. Whew. Well I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Give me a piece of wood or something. Let's whoop on them a little bit. Let's try this big old piece of whatever that is, brass, bronze, I don't know. Let's heat it up some more. Hey. I will be. Well. Alrighty then. <laughs> Busted that collar. Anybody got a collar for a 390? Well, I don't really know what to do at this point because, I mean, it's not budging. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is roll it back inside and we'll pour something. I don't know. Let's try vinegar. I've never tried vinegar before. Let's just see what it does. Well, I got it back in the basement and I got it filled up with some vinegar. And if you remember, on this side, only this one was the one that wouldn't drain the stuff out well. It's draining out now. I don't know if you can see that dripping or not. I checked them all. All of these are draining. I'm going to let this sit here for a little while. Since they're draining, I'll flip it over and then we'll check the other side. Maybe it'll break loose eventually. I don't know. Well, it's been about three days since I put that vinegar in here. And it was still standing in that one and that one. I just brought it outside and dumped it out. And I've got some of this here at the store. I've never used it before. I don't know how it's going to work. But I'm going to fill that one and that one up and leave it a day or two and see what happens. Well, it's been about 24 hours since I put this evapo rust in here and well, as you can tell, it's still standing and it's even standing in this one now. I don't understand that. Uh, I'm running out of time and to be honest, I don't have the patience for this. So uh, I think I'm fixing to use some brute force on it. So you might want to close your eyes. Look at there. Oh, she's moving. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's awesome right there. Let me move back the other way. She's broke free. Awesome. Now, let me see if I can get these pistons out of here. I just want to show y'all something real quick. This is cylinder five right here. See that shiny on that bearing? That's Earl. That's engine Earl. It ain't dry. Pretty wild how it's still got oil on it 45 years later. I done turned that crank about a half a turn. And this piston right here is coming out pretty easy. So let's go ahead and get it out. Oh yeah, look at that first piston. That ring is broke, which is not surprising. <laughs> uh, Pistons? It don't look bad. Let me try another one. Oh yeah. Number two, number two. I wish I wouldn't have broke it. Uh, what do you call that? Up here, spacer. Oh, look here. Well, shoot, I don't need it. Well, hell, that's all right right there. All right, well, I can get them out pretty easy now, I hope. Oh, yeah, you just fell out. Look up there, look up there. Ooh, right there like it fell out on me. <laughs> well, I got all the pistons out, and the crank turned over pretty good. Uh, there is some scoring. It ain't real bad. It's just real light. Let me get it out, and we'll get it cleaned up, and we'll look at the pistons and the crank real close.
There it is. There it is. All right. Let me get the crank out, and I'm gonna get everything on the table over there. We'll get it cleaned up. Look at it. Well, I've been checking out the crankshaft, and uh, she got some wear. I ain't gonna lie to you. The mains are worse than the rods. Uh, I put the old micrometer on them. Here is the minimum of what it's supposed to be. Well, you can see what my measurements are down through here on the rods. And here's the uh, main. And you can see the measurements I got off it. It's the main is, yeah, it's kind of warm. These are uh, the clearances. And of course, you know, I won't know that until we put it back together. But like I've told y'all before, I'm not rich. I can't afford a new crank. I wish I could. I wish I could afford new everything and build the sucker hot. But I don't have the money for that. So, <laughs> all right, here are some bearings. Uh, of course, these are the rod bearings. And you can see, you know, they had some wear. You got metal color, and then you got this copper color where it wore down. Uh, that in there is probably worse. It's got a little groove in the middle of it. Here are the mains. Now, they are mostly copper colored, which, you know, goes along with the wear that I found when I put the micrometer on them. Uh, I mean, nothing I can do, like I said, you know, machine work costs too much money. That's why this motor isn't going to get the proper rebuild. I just can't afford it. Uh, well, let me show you this piston here. Is that right there? Two ring lands broke. And if you'll see, that's not new. There's no, there's no new coloration at the end of the ring land right there. So I don't think that's, uh, I don't think I did it. I believe it was already done just by looking at it. I could be wrong, but anyway, you see how the rings are stuck. This is the worst one, by the way, as far as rings being stuck and all. There were some rings that broke when I pulled the pistons out, but I mean, I'm not worried about that too much. Uh, but I'll definitely have to have at least one piston well, I just got done cleaning all these cylinders out and they don't look bad but number seven they've got some pitting right there and what is this a number three looks like a gouge right there at the very top and then here's number two that's the one that broke the ring lands it may have happened when I knocked the pistons out because it's it's pretty rough but it's surface rust there's no no uh real bad pitting or gouges or anything but uh going by the way lockjaw looked we rebuilt it and it runs as good as it does listen here it's gonna be a piece of cake i'll tell you what i am gonna do uh the guy that owned this car he told me it was running hot and he never knew why it was losing water he never knew why there was no water in the oil but just to be on the safe side we're gonna send this and the heads over there to the machine shop, get a mag flux to make sure there's no cracks. If they come back good, she's getting a this and that garage rebuild. Well, here's something odd I just discovered. I got my dial bore gauge checking each cylinder. And I uh, hope you can see it down in here. Let me get down here and show you. Right here where my finger is, that's on each side of the block. That's where the piston skirt never touches. There should be no wear there. That should be stock bore. Well, it's showing five thousandths on the dial bore gauge. Let me show you. Let me stick it down in there. Watch the dial bore gauge. That's about five thousandths. They're all consistently five thousandths over what stock bore should be on that non-wearing uh, patch there. So, I don't know if things been cleaned up five thousandths or what's going on, but uh, the motor wore out according to this fella right here. Motors wore out. I just want to show y'all real quick here in the motors manual. 64, 390, 300 horsepower over here. 427 on the torques. That ain't too bad. Well, I'm glad we finally got that thing apart. I thought we were gonna have to start busting pistons, but luckily we didn't. Only need one so far, but I'm gonna clean the rest of them up, make sure I don't need any more, make sure they're gonna work. Hopefully next time you see this motor, we'll be putting it back together. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't mind, hit the like, comment, subscribe. Share with your friends. Check out my merch. And until next time, go do something. Blurp, blurp.